Welcome back, Crusaders. I'm Table. I'm Red. I'm T Stay. And it is I, Shino Brando. And in this issue, we answer an all important question why do people like Batman? I'm just going to preface this entire discussion with as a big Batman guy, TM, I'm going to play idiot's advocate a lot of this episode and do my best to defend at least one version of Bruce Wayne from sucking slightly less than some of the others. <laughs> I hope it's the one from the Gotham TV show. That one's a child. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's the one from Titans. <laughs> he's he's terrible. <laughs> I went the other direction. That one's an old old man. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh man. He's. I can't look at him and be like, Nah. Yeah. I, no. He doesn't fight crime. St- shut up. That man's never done a backflip. No. That man has done a backflip and used to fight crime. He does not know more. <laughs> he's more worried about oh, yeah, how many man. diabetes pills he needs to take. Anyway. Stop this. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we can roast him as much as we want. There's so much to pick at, but at the end of the day, we all still like him, and why do we? Right? Why did a company decide that that was the book that they were going to name themselves after? Mm. It's funny you bring that up, because, like, su- again, Superman came a year beforehand, right? With D- I guess DC at the time. I can't remember what they were called at the time. I'm sure they right? they weren't DC, but they were like, we need more of that. So they got, you know, Bob Kane and Bill Finger. And Bob is like, you know, I got some ideas. So they kind of kicked around, puts around and threw an idea. And then that took off way more than Superman the year after. And here we are. Batman's here, man. Well, it's definitely ha- got to have something to do with the very, very basic fact that this is a clown without superpowers. This fan is running around doing shit. And though these days you're risking a lot to bet that the next issue of Detective Comics will actually involve a mystery. Mm -hmm. Uh, people (laughs) fucking love mystery stories okay and he used to actually solve crimes and do things we promise which it's engaging it gets people paying attention and following and no superpowers punches people sometimes he's got a gut usually we take that away from him (laughs) not as early days where where he used the gun with little remorse Exactly. That's what people sometimes forget is Batman started with a gun because that was a method of self-defense besides just pow, you punching. know? Yeah, punching shit out of somebody. Yep. Because guns, okay. Brass knuckles, absolutely not ever. <laughs> no. Look, if the brass knuckles inside your gloves, is it really still there? <laughs> Especially when your gloves are purple. There's no sense hiding brass knuckles, you know? <laughs> Did you know? That 37% of you aren't subscribed to the channel on YouTube? You can help change that by hitting the subscribe button just below the video. And now back to the show. I think the stuff that he uses in place of superpowers throughout the iterations of the franchise are part of where the appeal comes from. Mm -hmm. Not that you're never told, but a lot of time you don't know that the Batmobile has a particular function or a particular feature or a particular bell or whistle until he's using it. And I think that really captures the audience's attention and especially like younger audience if we're talking about the cartoons. I think that it's very fun to imagine yourself as Batman and having the ability to just conjure the solution to your problem. No, see, let's yeah. pick on that a little bit. because I'm happy you brought that up because with Batman, right? It's like, so that's plot armor, one. And yep. people like to pick up plot armor and I don't mind Batman because I love that. This. So uh, with him, it's, it's funny that people often like think it's just, hey, it's a guy with gadgets. But like when you really break down the core of it all, right? If you want to talk the core of it all, uh, this is a man who's got a lot of trust issues and a lot of artillery uh, based on people that he's met before. So like he, he just doesn't trust you. So he's made weapons to go against you. Right? Contingency plan, if you if you will. A man so, who lives in... So, like, use fear, but he lives in absolute fear at all times. You know what I mean? I do. But I'm thinking specifically of, like, the uh, Batman Returns, the Tim Burton one, where oh boy, that yeah. tailor just comes out underneath his car. You're suggesting he was previously in a situation where he didn't have that. I was like, oh, you know what would be handy for next time? Yeah. That's actually exactly. That's <laughs> carrying around a notebook of improvements to make at all times. Literally. And I mean, there's something to be said about a character who every possible flanderization is fucking great. <laughs> like, uh, for people unfamiliar with the term, flanderization is when you take one aspect of a character and you, you exaggerate it beyond belief. 
every yeah. single aspect of Bruce Wayne's character is fucking hilarious if you take it to 100. Yep. Like, yeah, he makes plans and stuff. Take it further. He's a doomsday prepper. That's why he has his kill Superman suit. That's oh, why this guy God. loves kid. Take it to 100. He's got 12 children running around his house and he doesn't know all of their names. You like, know what? It's funny. It, it, the best line I ever heard of kids. So the 2005 animated series, The Batman, um, had a had a great arc where he was, he was slowly building the Justice League as they was meeting them one by one. And when he confronted the Martian, the Martian had like a, a like a one on one with him, and he literally you really like know about like Martian lore and DNA. He's like, yeah, I will read about any theory and any lore, no matter how obscure. That's the kind of guy this guy is. We're talking about here. He, yeah, Bruce can do other things you're allowed to live man it's all right this man doesn't know what free time is yes he does because he knows he's got nothing but free time (laughs) time, yeah he's been reading things obscure the man has more passive income than he could ever want all of these are hobbies (laughs) this is why alfred always needs to go to the gala because he's too busy punching the riddler always the riddler but there's also one of those elements of like when faced with Martian Manhunter and you go all right well if they're gonna have a fight how's that gonna go because at the end of the day the way you beat Martian Manhunter is you set him on fire uh, <laughs> yeah so, yeah, so let's talk let's talk here. some versions we, of Batman are willing yeah. to set Martian Manhunter on fire and yeah. some aren't so now, let's, let's talk about that because you have, have you watched or read uh, Justice League Babel Babel I don't think so. Well, that was, I think that got translated into Justice League Doom. I think the uh, the animated movie where oh, he yeah, literally had the, yeah mm-hmm. the Agamemnon um, protocols. Yes, exactly. Where if every contingency plan for every member of the Justice League was used against him, he had an emergency plan just in case they snapped. Right. So let's dive into that because this is we have to talk about like why Batman is and why we like that. This is someone. If you want to talk philosophy, like why team up with a gang to only want to turn on them if you had like you know what i mean like why think that way yeah who likes a guy who's willing to kill all his friends if he has to i'll jump in for that and go Mm -hmm. when you start to think like big picture right and you Mm -hmm. live in a world of martians and doomsday and like Mm -hmm. dark side and all of that it's time to start writing things down and start planning for whether it's your end the world's end someone backstabs you it's time to start Mm -hmm. planning for everything and so the unfortunate part is it starts to include your friends because they're well, super powered and superheroed. I think it's about powerlessness. It's the world is so big. There are so many things that are scary or dangerous. And most of the time we actually can't do fuck all. There's nothing you can do to protect yourself from so many things. And so the idea of this guy going, no, no, there is, there has to be, and I will mm-hmm. make a way if there isn't one that exists already. And then taking that philosophy and applying it to everything he encounters, sure, it's you know, a little harsh, but it is. It's very much a optimistic. double-edged sword, man, <laughs> because yeah. with that, it's just like, you know what? There's two ways to look at it. I think Superman has looked at it this way before too, but with that, it's just like very noble of you because if we if we do snap, we're gods, right? So like you, there right. should be They're someone coming up against who, this. Yeah, you know, someone should be able to stop us. But at the end of the day, it's just like that essentially makes Bruce the most unstoppable man. Hmm. I think it was Grant Morrison who was writing the Justice League as gods, mm-hmm. and having Batman be an overwhelming like pot of knowledge. And be able to take down the rest of them as such a strategist. That's the thing. I mean, at the end of the day, he's he's essentially Prometheus. Yeah, bringing all of that down to Earth level. Um, to comment on something Red and Table you both brought up earlier, this idea that like he in the world of chaos in the world of uncertainty is working against odds. I think there's something to be said for that, but he's entirely reactive and reactionary in everything that he does. But that's what the plans are for. The whole point is that there is prep work laid down. He's Right. But at the same time, he's not necessarily persecuting things before they're carried out. You know, he doesn't go... Yeah. No, Batman doesn't do preventative justice. Bruce Wayne does sometimes, but Batman can't because he's when he shows up, he's going to break eight bones and you can't do that on a hunch. (laughs) No, I'm not talking about a preemptive strike. But what I am talking about is like, not that there's no, but there's a lack of depiction of the work to like make 
bad things not happen and not in the sense of a preemptive strike but like you know I, this has been commentated on before that like you could put the funds that built the Batmobile into social programming you could work on diversionary measure and if I, think I may that, yeah he does he literally okay. does all the time he literally okay. donates as much money as he possibly can to Gotham's infrastructure to social programs to establishing affordable housing to Okay. Hell, there's a youth program that gets established for at-risk youth so they don't get into gangs. I, I okay. get your point, but I, I promise- You're some- more baked into the media than I am, so I'll, it, I'm fully willing to say you know more about this than I do. Yeah, don't, and, yeah, don't, don't, yeah. Don't and, feed yourself, he's, he's, it's, it's sort of been more recent where Bruce has been doing that more. I will tell you right now, in comics, like pre-80s comics, there wasn't much of that going on. Um, pre 80s yeah. comics was punch a guy in a funny costume not yeah and that's it how do you yeah. solve the problem of poverty yeah, yeah. social commentary you know he came into like, like late 70s early 80s so that's yeah. when we started getting like a more core batman i mean essentially that like that kind of like bruce wayne we only I, like i swear to god like 1985 so it's not that long ago yeah and that's in a response to your audience's politics changing right yeah yeah, we had a discussion recently about censorship where we brought up the comics code and Batman's one of those heroes that got super shaped by it because initially mm-hmm. he was running around solving crimes, fighting mobsters, et cetera, et cetera. And then he wasn't allowed to do that anymore because mm-hmm. that was too scary, too violent. So it went to funny guys in costumes. And then people were allowed to do other things and they decided to get nitty gritty about it. But an issue was that, yeah, politics had changed. It wasn't okay to just punch mentally ill people or poor people in alleys. So you end up just scary rapist in an alley, mugger with a knife, you know, that kind of thing Mm -hmm. where full organized stories about systematic problems became harder to write because people weren't interested in Batman giving someone hospital bills for life and ruining their entire life. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think that in terms of why do people like the character, you probably don't want to read a dissertation on how to solve social, even if it's beautifully illustrated. Yeah. Like, I I think it's more enjoyable and the audience is able to connect more with those alleyway interactions. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing you, I say that you brought up connection. With Batman, it's, it's the, that visceral, raw you know, like, because, you know, you live in an inner city, you know, these crimes are real crimes. Most of them anyways, that, you know, you see many cops going up against clay guys or guys in, you know what I mean? In, in cold, in cold machine suits. But the raw crime of like, you know, like rape, murder, theft, all that stuff. It's very real, very relatable. And so, again, Batman being very human and, not, you know, not powered gives us that instant connection of like, anybody can be this guy if you you know, that whole trip of Batman of like, you know, he dedicated his life to go learn all this bullshit. Like he learned like all the martial arts. He read all the books, all the science, all that. You know what I mean? Like he's literally, his IQ should be fucking out the door, right? And apparently he's got like the body of like a top tier athlete. So this guy's given did. So it just gives you the idea of like, hey, if given the time of like strengthening your body and your mind, you too can be Batman. And that's why everybody just kind of connects to him so much. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, when you hear about a violent crime, don't you kind of wish you could have, you know, done something about it? Mm-hmm. I wish I could have done something about sometimes nonviolent crimes. There yeah. you go. And on the other end of the spectrum, why some shitty people like Batman? Because oh, I want to be clear. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to be a gatekeepy douche, right? Obviously, yeah. you know, blah, blah, comics are for everyone. But mm-hmm. there are wrong reasons to like Batman. Same way there are wrong reasons to like the Punisher. There are people who like to see Batman as a cop plus, like Mm -hmm. cop who's not bogged down by red tape and can just do what needs to be done to solve the thing and Uh, whoever deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very retributive kind of understanding of justice. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to on Batman. No, he doesn't get to, he actually, you know what? At the end of the day, most times Batman is just just doesn't get to do what he wants and gets away with it. You know that, right? Like most of the times when he does that, he still puts himself on a thin line of the law. And so he sometimes gets chased. I mean, he does the job, but I mean he did it in a in the wrongest way to and get also, the like, deed done. His relationship with his local police, depending on how he manipulates their crime scene, is how they're gonna mm-hmm. treat him. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And people assume that because Batman and Jim Gordon are usually on good terms, that Batman and the Gotham City Police Department are usually on good terms, and that's not true. No, man. (laughs) It's just Jim amongst many that he has to tell sometimes, shoot on sight, even though he's still working with the man. 
every right. cop in Gotham sucks at least a little. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not but- a cab. All cops are bastards. It's a cabs. All cops are Batman's friends. <laughs> but yeah, it's that idea that like, oh, if only we could just do the things we wanted to do. If there was someone who was capable of pulling it all off, it would be okay. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're using it in a bad way here, but mm-hmm. it's the same concept. Yeah. I guess that's just, that's what it comes back to over and over again is it's possible. Whatever you wish the world was like, whatever you wish Mm -hmm. you could do personally, it's possible if you put in the effort. Yeah, Batman has a real, and I I know I'm not the first person to comment on this, but Batman's whole storyline is so driven by the idea of like free will. Mm -hmm. And Batman as a character, like when you compare him to the other DC great Superman, like Superman is always a good guy and superman is kind of infallible or at least often shown to be but batman in theory could screw up and batman just has a lot of agency because he's not bound by the narrative of he's this good otherworldly being sometimes he is just a guy in a furry suit on the streets of gotham in a furry (laughs) shoot she says wow i heard i heard <laughs> I, there's many the there's, persona right like really man you right well, See, i mean as the character sort of started with like an interpretation of zorro and the phantom mm-hmm. and spinning out of that and the shadow yeah and the shadow yeah. it's like going back to his crime pow bam sort of days of doing that in comics that's exactly it it's you know zorro was a little bit your everyman right the phantom was an expert in his field but not quite the everyman yeah i mean you know they did their thing it's just that with bob kane he was just like i want to make anything that anybody can do batman does better right no matter what if you think your dude's good batman's better period right so that's why he's got all that going on for him Um, batman being the everyman but also the everyman you would want to be the everyman who has endless resources endless time and endless intellect yeah 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 Right? Like, he doesn't, in a lot of the media, and a lot of the mainstream media that you, kind of your layman audience would see, he doesn't have the weaknesses that an everyman like Spider-Man has. Mm-hmm. Right? His he doesn't have a family techn- go after. He already lost them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Batman's relationship to technology, in the narrative of the story and the purpose it serves in the story, is it that different from a Green Lantern ring? Uh, not necessarily, no. Right? Green Lantern's guys well, use your imagination, but I mean, but anything yeah, but, really yeah yeah but he just had to use his imagination three weeks ago yeah he had to use <laughs> yeah. his imagination three weeks ago and like stand in front of a really cool c- computer screen that's clear from the back side yeah. For no <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like he didn't know right? he needed bat shark repellent until he ran into a shark one day and was like ah yeah. fuck. that's also yeah. you know that's also in contract if batman loses he wins the rematch no matter what because he knows how to beat you now right mm-hmm. which is kind of fun oh yeah, yeah. it's an mm-hmm. idealized right. every man like but you can make whatever jokes you want about Mary Sue's, but that's Batman. That is who he is. That's what he's for. Uh, the the male form is Larry Stew. Oh, th- my apologies, T Stain. Batman's a Larry, Larry Stew. Stew. I think the yeah, Larry Stew. Yeah, Stew. Larry Stew's. The Larry Stew's are fine. All right. And sometimes that's fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. There's an aspect of Batman that we're not so much talking about, um, mostly because there's something coming up in pop culture that is mainly focused around the central character himself. Mm-hmm. Mm. However, for a hot second, the other reason I think a lot of people like Batman is when we start to take one step away and start to build the Bat family. Before you go there, okay, I want to touch on something because that's bigger. Right. But wait. Yeah. Talk about the look first before we get to any of that. Why why does that work? Because you brought up the Phantom. You brought up the Shadow. You brought up who else was there that we brought up? Uh, Big ones we talked about. Zorro. Yeah, Zorro. Exactly. So, you know, and he came, he's around the same time as those guys in print, really. Maybe only, maybe like maybe 10 years after, if if not only a few, not that much. So why, you know, those guys were dressed down in what? Like the Phantom had like a, a onesie with a domino mask, right? Right. You had Zorro with just a, a simple black getup, a cape, and a hat. Shadow was just a fedora with a long jacket and a scarf. So why a bat? And why does that work? And why then? Pointy. No one else. You know what? No one else is doing it, right? And what would possess someone to dress down in a bat costume? And why does it work? And then why does everybody like it so much? Even though you like Tablehead just poked fun of it, like calling it a furry suit, right? Right. But let's, then at the end of the day, let's break down the furry suit, if you will. Right. And at the end of the day, if if you found one, you'd you'd probably put it on. 
Well, yeah. Yeah, depending on how much latex yeah. that thing's really made of, but yeah. Right, exactly. So but, what? <laughs> so I think to start off that part is let's look at the way back, right? You've got all these influences, and then you've got the mastermind behind it all that deserves the recognition that very recently he's starting to get Bill Finger. Yes, deserving, right? actually. Yeah. Right? Not only did he take what Bob Kane had, distilling your pulp heroes we just named, but turned it into our Cape Crusader. You have him going around in the middle of the night, going to right wrongs, and that's sort of where that lineage starts. In fact, his first costume if it was stupid. Have you ever seen his first, first, like, drafted costume? Yeah, the one that's assigned to Bob Kane most times. Mm-hmm. That thing is terrible, man. Thank you, Bill Finger, for fixing that, man, because that would have been a mistake. Look, yeah. I think but... the best version of Batman's costume is when he is an amorphous black blob with pointy ears. <laughs> and see, okay, you know, mm-hmm. and that's that's something to go into a little bit because his early interpretation, his gloves were fucking purple. They yeah. were fucking purple. <laughs> Very strange. Why? Because they could be. And you know, they were commissioned because compared to his counterparts, like Flash, you know, Wonder Woman, and Superman, like he was the most darkest thing on print. And so <laughs> they were asked to make him more lighthearted, <laughs> like a year later. Um, and that's when he got the more smiley face mm-hmm. and kind of a tint of blue on him. Which like has found its own too much. Calm him down. Yeah. <laughs> Which found his own roots in pop culture because much later on, Todd McFarlane would go, actually, that's what I'm drawing. And I've got yeah. really cool statues of blue flailing in the wind, you know, year two Batman. Again, see the costume work like no matter how much it changed, and he changed it again. And like at the end you you brought it up, I think that that's like early eighties or mid eighties. So I think that that look only came around when Frank Miller essentially took over that that run right with dark knight returns yep. that's when everything changed for the better so yeah i think that's about maybe an early 90s run but yeah like see his costume again it works no matter throughout the years it just works even if you shorten the ears and give him a smiley face it still fucking works for even some when reason. you do the stupidest thing and you put the big yellow thing on his belt it still found a way to work but why did we find a bat cool man if you look at his costume killer the only thing that's close to it a bat is actually his cape the ears don't make any fucking sense yeah, he doesn't go around using echolocation, like... Right, and it's pointy ears. They don't look like bat ears. They just look like pointy tips. But I mean, it's just right, an cool. o- It's just an homage to a bat. Right, I, I guess that so, right? I suppose so. But yeah, they know even... It, symbol works. Um, it, it, People just, I don't know, like that look of it. It's always some kind of like sleek look, even if it's got the uh, later hosing in the front, right? <laughs> yeah, like a, like a pro wrestler, mm-hmm. uh, you know? It still works out, man. It's still an enjoyable costume. There's been, you know, countless ripoffs throughout the years, and it just, they just don't work like Batman. Yeah, he managed to hit something special. Yeah, even when you tweak it for something like Batman Beyond, they did it again, right? And that's even more simplified, and it still works. You have ripoffs of that costume, and right. they just don't work as rip well. Off. That's also mostly a onesie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's 100%. It's a tactical onesie, mind you, but a onesie nonetheless. But now that brings up a year later, it gave him a, a more lighthearted look. And that's because he had to be accompanied by a child. That's where you want to take over, right? Yeah. So again, it isn't the big narrative, but let's hop here for a second. Is mm. we start with a Robin and now we've got 16, depending Thank on how DC wants to count today. Mm-hmm. But class sizes only ever get bigger. There you go. Fact. There you go. <laughs> right? Not uh, funding and education. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Batman started his own orphanage, funds his own orphanage. It's called Wayne Enterprises. Charles Xavier, is that you? Exactly. But as we start to build from one Robin to a second Robin, that one gets, you know, beat with the good stick. Oh, God. We, the good we... crowbar. Exactly. <laughs> right? All good sticks are made of metal and curved. Anyway, you start to build a, a family now that now for some reason... Well, we know why. Encompasses Harley Quinn. Money. Money makes her accompany That's, the team. That, that is money, correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like that idea is, so we go, we build this clever super guy who can do whatever you want as long as it fixes the plot. And mm. that's great. And it's nice. And it's fun. But some people are going to be a little bit intimidated by that. Some people are going to go, yo, what the hell? Every time he does something. So you throw in a kid in a funny little suit and you go look at this little guy isn't he friendly isn't he approachable don't you want to relate to this kid because he also goes wow batman what <laughs> right holy insert joke batman you yeah. child audience can be robin and accompany batman since you don't feel like you're an old man in a costume you could be this child in a costume why it does also- batman love child soldier so much 
Well, it also gives the opportunity for the good guys to make mistakes and for mm. Batman's side to make mistakes, but Batman himself doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. And we never mm. want to think of ourselves as people who make mistakes, so I think that we like being able to imagine that we're Batman and imagine that we get it all right, but the narrative still requires that good guys make mistakes. So Robin can bumble and Batman can continue to be awesome. I suppose yeah. so. you know, you know, see, I, I wanna I would counter that because most of the times it shows <laughs> that with when he has a Robin, sometimes Batman bumbles like a bumblefuck and Robin has to come get his ass out of things, right? And, and that's, that's sometimes that's what that's what the insert Robin did just show, like, hey, you can't do everything, Batman, even though you know you want to, you can't. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason the boy hostage trope exists, you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> Robin spends a lot of time tied up, but it's one of those staples of earlier comics with particularly the first Robin. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes Batman does just goof because he's trying to parent in a situation where you shouldn't be parenting at all. Mm -hmm. The amount of times Dick Grayson must have told this guy to fuck off is I, I don't have enough hands. <laughs> Yeah, you really got to get the tally system out to count that. Yeah. Honestly, I pull don't. out your goddamn I... abacus. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, even after leaving and then having to team up with the, with the old boss man and, and his new persona, even then he still tells the guy to fuck off. Yeah, once Dick Grayson Robin, like, reaches his next evolution, that's about mostly what he does is, actually, Batman, you're wrong. Let's do it this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you right? Yeah, that does... asshole. <laughs> we get to have that conflict. We get to have character interactions. We get to have relationships that when you have one guy perched on a building like a gargoyle, you don't necessarily get to have. So we get, mm -hmm. I don't want to call it grounding, but... We get well, something the, else to look at, other types of stories of, to tell. The, well, the beauty of it, of it is because Bruce, and most of the times, Bruce is written as a know-it-all, and and that can get really annoying for a lot of people around him, you know. So right. um, that's where that dynamic comes in. It's just like you know, like Jesus Christ, Bruce, shut up, <laughs> you know, like okay, okay, dude, we get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're yeah, Batman. Yeah. You know, we know, we know, you're Batman. We get it. I'm Batman. We know. We know. We know. We've heard. Great. Thanks for reminding me again. Maybe he's just wear a name tag. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, he does on his goddamn chest in a big yellow symbol. Just shoot me what? here, he said. It's so stupid. It shouldn't be yellow. No, but you know I've what? They, they the explained that. that maybe that's more heavily armored, so he's giving them something yeah. to shoot at, but thank, it's thank silly. You for, yeah, no, the table's got it right because in the actual in the actual handbook of his costume, he's heavily Kevlar underneath there. It's to make sure that no one aims at his fucking head. Oh, I, like, I'm sure. This bright yellow spot. Shoot this. <laughs> I'm sure this is also why I just don't think it's dumb. Well, this is also the reason I mean, why Rob is dressed in such bright colors. Shoot at the child. Forget about me. You're assuming like pretty good aim too. Like <laughs> that little yellow square on your chest. Okay, that's reinforced. But like, do you think they're gonna hit the square? They're gonna try. <laughs> try yeah, there's, there's a story I mean, where somebody... yes, but they're shooting a handgun one-handed outside a car window. Like, <laughs> true enough. It's a random shot. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, they're lucky to hit anything. It's the yeah. same, but at the same, it's, it's the same time, it's like, Bruce, that's kind of stupid because your mouth is always exposed. So I'll just aim for your jaw. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I shoot you in the mouth, you're probably going to die there too. And you're not, there's nothing there covering your mouth. Nothing. Well, some versions of Batman fix this. Uh oh. But then we have to get into the discussion about why is it the first on page black Batman is covering the lower half of his face, especially when his stories heavily feature cops. Oh. And no one really wants to have that conversation. Oh, I, I think you do. Oh. You keep bringing it up. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, Jace. A little bit. Um, I agree. I agree. Brother, man, it's it's hard being a brother sometimes. I guess. I'm I'm just saying the only reason that Batman leaves it there is so the cops can see that he's white. <laughs> also, so he can eat snacks on patrol. Right. For real. For Lots real. Of bat granola bars. I'll have a bat boba tea. It's just a boba tea. Yeah. But I'm drinking it, a, so I'm Batman. Tapioca balls are shaped like little bats. I'll have bat lychee in it. It's just lychee, Batman. Uh, I'm the knight. Batman would drink lychee. You nailed it. Nice thing. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, so let's break it down. So then, okay, table, why do you like Batman so much? I like Batman because definitely in part, I like the infinitely better version of Batman that lives in my head. Um, and I think nice. everyone has a better version of Batman that lives in their head that they get to spend time with if they want. And that guy's pretty fucking cool. Right on. Right on. Red. I yeah. like Batman as a start of, right, those that have been around a while know that I love Legacy. Mm -hmm. And Batman is the point A of a thousand thousand Legacies, mm -hmm. right? So I like Batman because he 
started all these stories, but I could take or leave the man himself. I don't care if he's old or young or Gotham or Titans or, you know, wherever he lies, as long as he's there and gets to talk to his successors, I'm good. Right on. t stay. I like Batman as kind of a pulse point for the way we think about justice and how justice should operate. Mm -hmm. You know, like the way we look at the character's evolution over time and the times that the character does one thing or doesn't do one thing. Like the whole not killing people thing. Yes. Is very much like in the line of death penalty abolition, which I fully support. But he Mm. doesn't get into the broader discussion of prison abolition. Right? I just think that as a character, he's very interesting for the way that we think order exists in our society and the yeah, way we think yeah. justice should be practiced. Yeah, the judicial system and how it should really go down. In, yeah, in like I, yeah, th- yeah. I think as a character, the way, like he kind of mirrors that he's just sort of a pulse point. See, I'll, I'll, I'll reflect on that because that's that's for me too because I enjoy Batman just on the fact that like this is this, and in particular Bruce because... I mean, they all do it, but Bruce in particular because he's the first. And Bruce, Batman Prime here is the, is the one that pushes the boundaries. And I, to a degree, kind of respect a, a little sort of vigilantism in the fact that, like, you will take it upon yourself to go and stop the crime if you can. I still, I always will believe in a, in a citizen's arrest, bro. If you can, if you can help stop yeah. something from going down, then do it. If you, especially if you have the the ability. To, if I knew more kung fu, but I I, I can't do that. But I, I firmly believe in that kind of stuff. And I respect that kind of character and that kind of drive. And um, again, his overall dedication to pushing himself. I mean, at the end of the day, Bruce has gone to the point where he's denied himself satisfaction to any type of degree to keep, you know, the war on crime, as he calls it. Right. So it's that practition and that yeah. uh, discipline that I respect. Uh, I respect that character, especially with Bruce. Um yeah. You know? I don't know if my reservation about the character is just kind of a reservation about the model of an upper class savior complex, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. I think that's where my only reservation with him lies is like, yes, he's a vigilante, but we also know that like if he got caught, he would be able to get himself out of trouble in the way that only rich white dudes can, right? Well, um not that the, not that he's not taking risks. Like I'm not undermining everything that he does i just i don't know it's maybe bruce that gives me more pause than batman does the counter on that he he, that has been brought up in in commentary before and he's made commentary on that where the fact that he's brought up like it's not it's not his choice that he was born into a rich family he just happens to be and because of that he uses what he can right Mm -hmm. to to fight crime but allyship and um, acknowledging privilege does a lot yeah it's worth remembering that uh he didn't used to be a billionaire he used to be just a millionaire and the difference in scale of those two classes of wealth, like, don't get me wrong. I will never have either of those amounts of money, but mm. a millionaire can't fix an entire city with his own income. He just can't. No, Whereas no. a billionaire arguably could try, though they definitely shouldn't because I don't trust billionaires for love or fucking money. There, there we go. go. But so it used to be a lot of resources, but not technically limitless, you know? Yeah, yeah, and so that shift in the modern canon has creates a lot of really awkward questions, right? (laughs) It was it it was very recently in canon that Mm -hmm. Batman's wealth was decreased. Yeah, taken from him. And I'll never truly understand why that makes a difference from a writing and narrative perspective. It's like, oh, I guess this week I can't afford to pay the insurance on the bat boat. Like what? (laughs) <laughs> it's just to have him live off the lamb but like even at that he's still so new he still has many many places he can run and hide mm-hmm. he's got contingency plans man it's bruce wayne we're talking about here yeah and you sure um, hope some of those contingency plans involve, you think what if i don't have money crypto. no i don't think he trusts crypto so i don't think he does it actually I crypto mean... requires everything to be public record no way he would commit to that yeah oh, that's true, that is true. <laughs> All right in the description we will have a link to his a- in amazon affiliate link uh, that will lead us to our favorite Batman stories that kind of exemplify our point. With that in mind, Beastie, if you please. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, go ahead and button mash a thumbs up. If you want to swing by when we have a new video, web up the sub button. Oh, and while you're at it, hit the bell to be notified by. And hmm, is it really Batman Begins, Batman Returns, Batman Forever? I don't know, that's to be continued.